All right, this is Miss JJ, Jasper Richardson, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me, I'm back. Uh, I actually forgot yesterday, um, I did a detox. Um, I have I haven't been doing my detox regularly. And the reason why I pulled back on my detox is because you got to allow your body to um, heal itself and, and work on its own sometime. You know, um, if you always give it assistance, it's going to always be looking for assistance. So, you know, sometime I pull back on um, eating certain things or uh, detoxing regularly to see if my body can do it on its own. However, I guess I went too long and my body was telling me it was time to detox and I wasn't paying attention when I detoxed yesterday. And you know, when you detox, you also taking out the trash, <laughs> meaning you're cleaning your body, getting rid of all them toxins, you know, and being that I work where I work at, I should be detoxing on a regular basis. However, I do, I, I, like I said, I do need to allow my body to work on its own because if it doesn't, I'm going to always be subjected to taking something to make it detox itself. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little sick this morning because of my detoxing, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, getting back to taking out the trash, you know, we meet people and people can seem like they are the best person ever. Okay. And you say to yourself, this is it. This is it. You know, as y'all know, I've been married twice, you know, and divorced twice, um, and both mates, you know, I thought I was on cloud nine, you know, dealing with these mates and until I saw the real them, you know, and the real them always come out, you know, and you know, something that an old uh, man had told me a long time ago, and he said to me, you never learn a person until they're dead. And I didn't understand that, you know what I mean? People change over time. And when they change, what do you do? You know, because you could be the same person. You might have changed, but a little bit, you know, because you always uh, grow with age. But the change don't be dramatic, you know what I mean? So you pretty much still the same person, but you carry things differently. But then you have some people that do a dramatic change and you're saying to yourself, like, that's not who you are or who you used to be. What is going on with you? So when you get people in your life like that, if you can get away from them, get away. Take out the trash, turn your back and keep on stepping because you don't want the, the extra in your life. Okay, because people can bring extra nonsense to your life. Bring negative auras to your life, okay, just by being around you and the way they think, the things that they have, in, you know, in their minds. It can destroy your well-being, you know, when they go through uh, their uh, issues mentally, you know, you are subject to that, you know, and you don't want to be subject to things that you don't believe in. You know, just like I'm going to use my, my family, for instance. You know, my family and my friends, all from New York, everybody drinks, everybody parties. This is what we do, you know. Um, but I couldn't personally continue to do that because it wasn't for me. And I had to see that. So that's one of the reasons why I left um, my whole family. I did. I mean, I'm just keep it real with you. I left my whole family. I left uh, my friends. I left everybody because I had to see life for what I wanted to see it for. Live how I wanted to live, not how they wanted me to live because that was common for them. When you get around people like that, that's in your, in your circle, sometimes we have to take out the trash, meaning... Get rid of everything that's a part of them, okay? If you can help it. Now, for those that can't um, just pick up and leave, you know, people used to always say to me, like, how are you able to just pick up and go like that? You know, sometimes I had to save money. I had to sit down and, and 
and, and budget things out and say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to eventually get out of this circle because it's not for me. It's making me weak. And that's what it does. It makes you weak. It, um, when you're trying to focus on something and you can't because they're focusing on other things, it can tear your, your aura and your um, energy down. So that's when you have to make a decision. You know, no matter how much you care about a person, you have to make that decision and say to yourself, you can't be around me because of the way you live your life. Okay. And it's nothing wrong with that. You know, I had a friend tell me recently, you know, um, I don't mind coming around you, but the company you keep, I can't mess with them. You know, and I, and I understood where they, they went with it. You know, I don't have no gripe with the person that they were talking about. However, um, I understood when a person, when a person feels like you are draining them, you know, even if they are, they could be in the wrong, but if they feel like that, then sometimes it's best to apart. And live your life separately because they may not understand what they're doing, um, even though everybody may see that it was really nothing big. You understand what I'm saying? Or if it was big, but how can I put this? I, I just want to make sure you understand where I'm going with this. If something may not be big to one person, but it may be big to another. Reason being because everybody loves differently. You have some people that will love and put their soul heart into you 100%. Okay. And try to help you, try to love you, whatever you need, they're there. So when they get hurt behind something, okay, it hurts really bad, especially when they're used to hurting people. I mean, helping people or being around a person and things are just not right. It, it You know, it drains you. Now people may not see it for what it, for what it is because they may not ever been in that situation and that's the, that's the thing with life. Not everybody has been through the same thing. So all our stories are different and all our uh pain is different. Okay? Like a lot of people say to me that I'm cold. Yeah, I became cold because my pain was so intensifying. If I didn't become cold, I wouldn't be surviving. I wouldn't be living because the stress would take over my life. Okay? And stress is the number one killer. And I tell people that all the time, you know. Um, so at some point in your life, you have to say to yourself, either I'm going to become cold and not listen to the nonsense and move on with my life, or I'm going to join in and try to, to, to get through this cycle or whatever me and my friend or my people, my family is going through. Okay. Don't You see, every now and again, where there's family members that disown other family members totally, you know? Um, and that happens a lot in the, in the gay community or um, in the community where there's family members who have someone that's on drugs. They would disown them. And it's not that they want to disown them, but they're different, okay? They are like the black sheep. Now, you have two different types of black sheep. You have one black sheep that's out there doing bad, and then you have the other black sheep that wants to do good better than what their family has done. So you have two types of black sheep. You know, um, getting back to why people need to take out the trash and, and, and get away from it, because it's going to make your aura negative. And that's just the bottom line. You know, when you're around a person and you know that they're just not fit for you, <clears throat> you feel some type of anxiety when you get around this person, it's time to go. It's time to make that decision. Okay? No matter how much you love this person, you have to break ties if you want to go further in life. And that's just the bottom line. You know, we do it all the time with, with mates. You know, we, we be with mates and we be with them for years and we say, I can't imagine, you know, dating someone else. I can't imagine being alone. I can't imagine, you know, because you've been with this person so long. But 
this person is draining you mentally and physically. You need to imagine it. <laughs> so you can build yourself back up and move on. Okay. Um, then you have people out here that don't want to be like, like you, you know, and you know how they say birds of a feather flock together. You know, you have some people <clears throat> that you may have say two females. One is a whore and one is a good girl. They say opposites attract. Okay. They bounce off the negative energy and positive energy. Okay. That's why opposites attract. However, one is being drained dramatically. And most of the time it's the good one. Okay. So now, you know, you know, you got people saying birds of a feather flock together, which is not true. Okay. And that's what I was getting to. It's not true. It's just that opposites attract. Okay. So where that negative person is um, doing negative, that good person comes in and, and covers that negative. Okay. So the people or um, what's going on around, the people that's around or businesses that's around or whatever the case may be, won't be able to see that because they see the good. You understand? So, but it drains the good. Okay? It drains them so bad so where they start to get weak. Okay? And they start to fall apart. And it's not a good thing. Okay? Not at all. It would drive you crazy. It would make you Start hating yourself. And this is when it's time to say, let's take out the trash. Get rid of it. Okay? Because you can't have people draining you when you're the good. You just can't. Because it's going to make you so weak to where you can't, you can't do anything. Mentally or physically. Close the door, please. Thank you. Um, you don't have to. The, the, the faster you do it, the better. Out. On your class, out. Oh, now she wants to be. If you want to stand here and look at the podcast, say good morning. Say good morning. She doesn't want to speak. She just wants to be. It says on 13 minutes. That's all I've been on. 13 minutes. So you're late. No, I was on and I got sick. I had to go to the bathroom and I got back on. Oh, so That's none of your concern. Your Don't have a whole conversation with me. Okay, go on. get on your class. Close my door, please. And have a good day. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. No, I'm not mean. You're mean for interrupting me. No, but I have a health concern. What's your health concern? You this is it business. Okay, so then you wait. <laughs> Ugh, I'll tell you these children. Anyway. Getting back to getting rid of the negative. We have to love ourselves, people. You know, um... I'm, I'm going to use this for instance. When I first got into the industry, you know, not when I first got into it because I got in 30 years ago. However, um, when I came back this time, the big thing was having big butts, breast implants. You know, you had to have all this body. And I said to myself, mm -mm, ain't going down. When I came back into the industry back in the day, everybody was slim and trim. Okay? It wasn't no... Um, I needed these big breasts. I needed these this big butt. You know, they didn't even look at you if you was big. Okay. And I'm thankful now, you know, because I had got big at one point, but then I had lost a lot of weight when I got sick. And I told myself, 
excuse me, um, maybe because I used to be really, really, really thick. And when I got sick, I got really, really, really small. And that's when I started really getting into the industry and people was noticing me because I was little. Um, I had the look, you know, um, I can dance and they really wanted me in the industry. However, okay. I was slim, not because I wanted to be, I was slim because I got sick and I couldn't eat. So I was weak a lot of the times, but they didn't know that it was none of their concern. Um, However, that's what the industry was based upon back in the day. Now, when you when I come back in, everybody wants this, like I said, the booty, the breasts, all these things. And I've never been into that, okay? I'm from the old school. You want a booty, you squat. You want some bigger breasts, you buy clothes that will push your breasts up bigger, okay? Just like I, I, I show... Um, Matter of fact, it's on my Instagram right now. I have a picture. You know, people thought I had breast implants. <clears throat> and <laughs> I, I put on this dress. Okay, y'all look at the dress. Um, It's black and silver. And I'm laying down. It's on my Instagram. Y'all see my breasts both up. Okay, now everybody knows that I wear sports bras. I wear sports bras because... I like to keep my, my breasts lifted, okay? And it's pretty much like training your breasts. You know, you're training your breasts to stay up. Now, if I don't wear a sports bra, that's when my breasts are hang down lower, okay? So I took that initiative um, to train my breasts pretty many years, okay? And then I stopped. I stopped for a while because I wanted to see if I could do it again. You know, um, if it was something that I learned and being that I was, yo- I was younger, uh, my body just went on ahead and formed, or is it something that could be done with even older women that have these sag- sagging breasts, you know? Um, so, you know, I-, I try to do things before I tell people about it. I try to do it first or take it first before I start spreading the word and see how I like it first. Then I spread the word. However, if you notice, in some of my clothes, my breast sits up very high, okay? Now, that comes from me forming my breasts, and then when I put on certain clothes, you know, I move my breasts to a certain angle, okay? Now, they created all these breast lifters and connections and all this stuff. But anyway, getting back to to what I was telling y'all, people thought I had breast implants because the way my breasts look in that dress, that particular dress, Okay? No, I didn't have breast implants. I don't even believe in getting cut to make myself beautiful. Okay, I don't believe in injections. I don't believe in um, sucking out the fats. I don't believe in none of that because the way God created me is the way I'm going to stay. The minute that you do that to yourself. Okay, remember I told you the other day, my, my, my dog... Uh, ne- uh, not Neji, uh, Remington. I didn't want to fix him because I felt like that's not what God wanted, but they went on ahead and fixed him anyway. I kept feeling like I w- I'll be able to train him not to do, in- not to do certain, certain things because he wasn't fixed because we all are learning process. Okay. However, you know, some dogs, they go ahead and fix them, you know, because they don't want to go through the process. Well, my theory is train, train. Now, the reason why I have that mentality is because, y'all got to remember, I grew up as an athlete. I started very young, um, running track, and our mindset is totally different from the average mindset because you have to train and you have to focus, Okay, so you're not going to be thinking about that outside extra. Okay, and that's this is what athletes do. If they are training for, say, I'm going to use boxing, for instance. Boxers, before they get in that ring, okay, 
They do a lot of meditation. They do a lot of eating right. And they train. And they get rid of everybody around them that can bring some type of negative energy that they may feel is negative energy because it may not be negative energy. They just may think it's negative energy because of the things that they've learned and the things that they've seen in the past or whatever the case may be, but they don't know you as a whole. So when they don't know you as a whole, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm saying this, if, when they don't know you as a, a whole, they can feel like certain things you do is negative energy towards them. Okay. When they could just have fear of what you're doing. However, when they have fear of what you're doing, you need to evaluate that and pull back and let go. Because what you're doing is what you're doing. And what they're doing is something totally different. And this is what we have to do, you know, even with basketball players, football players. Most of the time, they're separated away from their families because they can't have the extra while they're trying to train. They have to be focused. This is why when, like, you see a basketball player, if it's one of his parents pass away, they'll tell him, take the time off because I need you mentally here. Okay, this is what I pay you for. I pay you so you can be mentally here and you can't be mentally here. If your mind is dealing with death or your mind is dealing with something that happened at home. Okay. So this is when they'll say, Hey, just go, go do what you do. When you get better, you come back until then. I can't deal with you. Okay. You're not fit for this team right now. Okay. You have to understand it because it's not that they're pushing you away. It's not that they don't care. They need you for certain things. And if you can't be there for them certain things because you're doing other things, you're useful. That creates a negative environment, which can cause a lot of stress, arguments, fighting, drama, and you, and, and pain. So when you have these type of things in, going on in your life, you know, where you're not sure about what you're trying to do or want to do, you need to separate yourself from others so you can figure it out. Okay. Whether it's going to hurt financially, mentally, physically, you have to deal with that. But people don't want to deal with if your mind is not right because of the things that you're doing. Okay. So that's when we say, Hey, go, go live your life. Do what you do when you are ready. Come on back. And we're, we let, let's do this. And this is just how the athletes in the, in the, not only the athletes, um, even with, with TV shows, you'll see that some people have be having issues at home or whatever the case may be. And then tell them, okay, well, this is going to be the last season for you. We're going to kill you off or we're going to write you out or whatever the case may be so you can go deal. Because we need you focused here. Even when you get hurt at work. Sometimes they'll put you on, say, a light duty. Because we know that you can't focus on the heavy duty. And this is what it, it, it happens in all situations, people. Okay. Because they cannot deal with the extra, the stress, okay? Whatever your drama got going on, they can't deal with it, okay? So they, And they don't want it, and that's just the bottom line. And you can't force a person to want something that you don't want. I mean, they don't want, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, something that they don't want because they have goals. And that's where you have to leave it and understand Listen, I have to pull myself out because this is what I'm going through mentally and physically or whatever I, my family is going through physically and mentally. And then I'll come back and, and conjugate with my people to, to make some things happen or mm -hmm. go further in, in, in life with, with the work that I'm doing or whatever the case may be. It happens all the time. Okay. 
But we have to know when to say, you know what? When it's ex- extra stress. Okay, when you're dealing with people that's when you really don't really need it in your life, you just take the, the garbage out and walk away. Okay? But you don't allow yourself to get too deep in. They just have to understand, listen, it's not you, it's me. I'm not ready to deal with what you what you're dealing with. Or I'm not ready to to um portray the lifestyle that you want to portray. I'm not ready for that. I don't want to be a part of that. That's not my life. And you have to let people know. You know, just like I had to let people know about me. You know, I I never really lived in a building. I lived in a house. I lived in a building in Harlem with my grandmother for a little while. And I lived in a building with my, my other grandmother. But when I got stable in the Bronx, I lived in a house. I was used to living in a house. When I moved to Buffalo, I was living in a house. When I moved to Maryland, I was living in a house. And then I'm here in Charlotte living in a building again. It may be a condo, but it's a building. I don't give a damn what the the outside says. It's still a brick building. And this is not what I like. This is not what I'm used to. Okay? So, I tell myself... It's time to take the trash out. I got to get rid of this and walk away because this is not my life. Okay. And I'm just using that for, for me. You know, that's not everybody's issue. Some people issues, it could be their husbands. It could be their kids. It could be a million and one things that they need to take the trash out on things and walk away. It could be their mates, their friends. So then they can open their eyes and see other things. Because, you know, when we when we're dealing with other people's nonsense or other people's stress or other people's uh, things, you don't see. You're blinded to everything else around you. And you miss stuff. Okay? Because you want to focus on whatever you're focusing on and... In actuality, it's not for you. So you have to make a decision. Which route do I really want to go? Do I want to keep dealing with the stress? Because stress kills. Extra nonsense kills. It would kill you faster than if you caught the COVID. If you caught cancer, if you caught HIV, this is why we tell people when they are sick and they have these different uh, illnesses, we try to keep them stress free so they don't die faster because most of the time, this is what happens. They get these illnesses and the stress overtakes them and then everything else starts failing. I'm going to use my mom, for instance, when she got diagnosed with cancer. She, she didn't want to tell me, but she had to tell me eventually. Um, she had to tell me anyway, because I heard the hospital, uh, you know, the beeping in the hospital and stuff, you know, and this is one of the other things that I I dislike too with people. You can't hide stuff for too long because then by that point it could be too late. And you know, that's how I felt, feel about my mom. You know, she would have told me from the beginning, I could have made arrangements to make sure that she will be be here with me today, you know. Um, however, she waited too long, and the stress was coming too fast, you know. When I told her, I said, "Ma, okay, well, you you um at stage, she was stage four, I believe, okay." And I told her, I said, "Okay, Ma, we have to do this fast because we don't want you to move on to stage five. Okay, and she didn't want to accept that, you know. By this point, you know, her, in her mind is, I'm going to die because I have cancer because all our other family members died with cancer. But she got to remember, you've lived almost 10, 15 years later and everything always gets better, okay, when people are doing research. So you can possibly live. Don't think negative. But she allowed that stress of all our family members dying pretty much write her off, Okay. 
In other words, <clears throat> allowing something to <sighs> continue to rule your life. Okay? Just like with this accident I had. Okay, I had two two accidents. I had a bus accident with trailways where I was in the bathroom. I was pregnant with my son and um, the bus driver hit the awning and I was in the bathroom at the time. I fell over into the floor. Okay, then I had another um, accident where I, we was driving to work. Um, I wasn't driving. Uh, the person that made the turn wasn't paying attention. Their perception was off and we made the turn. The Mack truck couldn't stop. The Mack truck slammed into um, the side that I was on and tore up my right side of my body. And I, I I went through a lot of stress over this This accident took over my life. OK, and I'm just going to be honest with y'all, but I could not allow it to control my life. So I would work out. I would eat right. I would fight it. OK, in other words, I took out the trash and said, I'm not going to let this um, destroy me. Okay. And I left it behind. Like it never even happened, even though it always come back and it reminds me I'm still here, but I have to fight that feeling. And sometimes that's what you have to do. People, you have to fight the feeling of whatever you're going through. Okay. Even with fear, you have to fight that feeling sometimes, you know, you have to say to yourself, um, I know I might've went through this. Now I'm going to use this for instance as well. It's another example. That's like, okay, I've been married twice. And I tell y'all, Ooh, I don't think I'm ever getting married again because of what I experienced. Now I may say that, but in the reality of things is everybody's not the same. Okay. It could have just been the men that I chose. So why would I say I would never do it again? Because I might meet this perfect man and he might be the one. And then I'm going to neglect him of marriage because he's the one. Is that fair? No, it's not. So <clears throat> that's why I would say, I would never say never. Okay. And I always used to tell people that when I was young, when they'd be like, I'll never do this. I'll never do that. And I'd be like, don't ever say never. Because you never know what that person has to offer. What that person, just because they may look like a certain person or uh, act like a certain person a little bit, don't mean that they, they that person. Granted, it may give you flashbacks and you may be like, oh, I don't know. But you can't allow yourself to be so fearful that you destroy your own life with nonsense. Some people can build their lives and destroy everything with their mouths, with their actions, and their decision making. They can destroy everything because they don't want to keep their mouth closed or they want to be in the midst of the rim of things. They want to act better than they used to be because now they're making more money or they got a bigger status. But remember where you came from. And this is why we, we hold that. They say let go of the past. Yeah, you got to let go of the past, but you got to remember the past as well. Because you have to say, this is what got me to this point. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have this, 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 and this. This is what built me. You are who you are who you are based on what you go through. You don't want to go through it again. So why make the same mistakes again? This is why people say, you know, and this is this is a model that I live by. I live by this model. You know, and this is why we teach. If a child breaks a rule and they didn't know it was a rule, you can't chastise them. Okay? You have to teach them. Once you've taught them and then they break that rule again, 
What comes behind that? Consequences. Okay? This is why I like the Jehovah Witnesses. You know, um, they teach you. Before you become a Jehovah Witness, you study, you study, you study. Now, when you break those rules, you have to start all over again because you miss something. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I love that about them because they want to make sure you get it so you can't keep repeating this negative act that you do. They want to make sure you get it. And that's why I love that. I love them. You know, um, I'm not ready to be a Jehovah Witness because, you know, if I do, I will have to I will have to pull away from the whole world. I will have to let go of my music career. I would have to let go even some of the jobs that I I be doing. It just wouldn't be right. You know, um, so this is one of the reasons why I haven't went back into that 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 lifestyle. It's a total different lifestyle. Who wants to keep starting all over? God gets tired of that, you know, and this is just even in the Christian, you know, who wants to keep starting all over and keep drilling people? You know, God is even tired. I've been teaching y'all and teaching y'all and teaching y'all what to do and y'all just not getting it. This is when we, if y'all look at look in the Bible and read the story about um, Noah. When God said, look. I need you to do this because I'm about to clean the earth because I'm tired of these people. But I just need you to get some people on that that, that uh, ark and a pair of animals so we can start everything fresh all over again. Because I'm, t- I'm tired. I'm about to take out the trash. I got to get rid of the trash. <laughs> And that's what he did. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights until the earth was clear. And then he landed the ark on a mountain and said, now you're free to go and rebuild this for me. Because those other ones was terrible. People, we're living in our last days. And if you are dealing with people that, and I'm not saying because none of us are perfect, that's dealing with self-love, that's dealing with um, self-worth, or uh, I'm going to use this for instance. My daughter, my little baby Egypt, you know, she was going through this thing. She was on TikTok and she couldn't get the likes and she was doing, she was dedicated. Y'all know she was dedicated. She was doing TikToks every day. Mm. They wouldn't give her the likes. They, they put a hold on, on her likes. You know, even with our YouTube, you know, they put a hold on it. Wouldn't let people like it. You know, my friends are telling me, we're trying to like your YouTube, and then they won't even like. Why don't they have it freeze? I'm like, look, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to keep going because I don't let stuff like that bother me. But there is people out here that allow that stuff to bother them. Okay? Now, with Egypt being my child, of course, what am I going to do? I'm going to console her, but it's going to pull a lot of energy from me. I, but that's what God <laughs> put me here for. So when she's going through whatever she's going through, I'm there to comfort her as a parent and give her that extra love because she's a child. She doesn't understand. But when you're dealing with adults, meaning 18 and above, okay, even though we still look at people as being a child when you're 25, okay? You have to be there to console these people, but it drains you. Okay? Family first. Family always. You know, sometimes we have to just let things go. You know, when I was young, people used to always say, why is you always picking up the trash and bringing it into your home? And I don't understand what people were saying. You know, just like the older people. They're going to pull you down. 
You always got this trash around. And I didn't understand what they were talking about. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to help the people. <laughs> you know, I don't like to see the people go through things. You ain't got to bring the people in your home to help the people. I figured that out later on. And it took years, but I figured it out. You don't have to bring the trash into your life to help them. Because they're going to drain you. It's your world. It's your choice. And this is what we have to go by. You may feel it's trash. And you just don't want it around you. Then you may not feel it's trash. You may be changing your way of thinking. Because that's what's in. But to other people, it could be trash. And that's why people are pulling away. Or that's why people are, people will actually destroy because of it. Okay, when they see that you can't handle yourself, sometimes people will step in and destroy. Me, I'm the type, I just walk away. I just say, you know what? I'm gone. You deal with it. I told you. We done taught you. You deal with it. Sometimes people got to go through, through things. You know? We got this new saying where we call certain people can't get right. You know, we got a bunch of those. You know, it's a long list. When you're young and you're 18, you have room for mistakes. But when you pass 35, there's no room for too many mistakes. That's when people start to destroy. Okay? So you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Because if they see that your mind ain't right, and that you need some, some self-care, but you can't get that self-care because you, you're doing other things that's, that's draining you, they will destroy. And that's just the nature of people. Especially when they feel like we need that person. So pay attention. You've got to pay attention, people, to the people that you're around, the things that you do, especially when you pass 35. Nobody is saying you got to be a priest, a minister. But you got to know how to conduct life. You know, um, and if you show that weakness, they'll look at you as like something's wrong with you. You know, and that's when the destruction comes in. Self-destruction. Because you'll start to see where everybody's against you. And that's when you self-destruct. You know? You know, sometimes people write music and write songs and title their albums or all this stuff that they've seen in the, in the past. And then they will live it. And they don't even see it. But you know, your world, your choice. People, when you see the negative, get rid of it. Take out the trash and walk away. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Ms. JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja. I love y'all and I will speak to y'all tomorrow. And thanks for being with me. My my, my belly was hurting. I had to throw that in there. Because ooh we when you detox, ain't no hole in nothing. <laughs> I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.